You're listening to The Real Fan Review with Hav, Sanj, Al, and B. What's going on, podcasters and YouTubers? This is Hav here, one of your hosts from The Real Fan Review. And today with me, we got my man and the chair, Al. How's it going, everybody? Yes, man. Today, just me and Al B. He's a little busy. Sanj is at work. So we'll be holding down the four for the two guys there, man. So we got things to talk about today, Al. We got the DC Phantom event that's happening in August. We got Robert Pattinson uh, trolling us about working out. (laughs) Uh, We got the NBA players seeing Black Widow before all of us and some Oscar stuff. And then we'll do a review on uh, You Should Have Left. And we'll talk about some dad stuff since Father's Day just passed. So let's get right into the news right there, man. And let's talk about this DC Phantom event, man. I don't know if you heard about the DC Phantom event that they're holding since Comic-Con is kind of shut down. DC's doing their own thing. And it looks like August 22nd, they're going to be doing something where they're going to show all these new trailers, Suicide Squad 2, possibly Black Adam information, uh, Wonder Woman 84. Uh, I think they're going to show something about the Justice League, Snyder Cut there, and a bunch of other stuff, maybe some tidbits about The Flash and all the other things there. So I just want to know, are you interested in seeing something like that? Um, the fact that it's going to be 24 hours, I'd want to see how they're going to play that out. I mean, a 24 hour virtual event right. should be interesting, but I like the, I like the format. I mean, I, I don't know if you saw it yesterday, the Apple event where they made their announcements and they went from their live event to a mm-hmm. virtual like streamed event where it was right. more of a production than a live event. And I like the way they did it. So if they can do something similar where it, it's well produced and they give us the information we're wanting instead of just waiting us wait again. Like you're telling me something, but you're telling me I got to wait again. So right. <laughs> as long as they give information, like the news that broke, it was, was it yesterday or the day before about Michael Keaton maybe coming back? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it gives time between now and August for them to work something out, finalize a deal, and maybe get them on board. That'll be a great time to bring them out and and say that he's on board and it's going down and bring that Absolutely. excitement ar- around a movie that a lot of us thought wasn't going to happen. Like, I start, I gave up on Flash. Yeah, me too. Especially with the stuff that happened with Ezra Miller maybe a couple months back or a couple weeks back, you know, with yeah. the situation with the domestic uh, violence there. But uh, I guess it's all go right now. And then I guess just yep. giving it time for people to kind of, I guess, forget about the issue or what happened. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I'm personally just interested in seeing what they're going to do as far as like this whole Comic-Con thing. You know, Comic-Con is usually held in San Diego, usually done around July. I don't think any of us have ever been to San Diego for a Comic-Con. So this is kind of kind of the uh, closest we'll get to that. Even Comic-Con, though, is still doing their own thing online as well. Um, but yeah. it'll be fun to see this whole DC thing done. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually going to definitely look check into it. And when they put those trailers out there, we'll definitely talk about those trailers they're going to oh, be yeah. putting out there. Absolutely, man. And then yeah. uh, on to more like DC type of topics there, man. Apparently, Robert Pattinson has been trolling all of us. Apparently, he is working out. He is doing <laughs> the routines that, that Superman used to do to bulk up and do all these different things. He also said that he's been... Uh, pretty much watching what Chris Evans did with Robert Downey Jr. and also Chris Hemworth, what they did with their characters to try to put a spin onto Batman that's different from what we've seen. So it sounds like he is taking it seriously. I guess what he was doing was uh, allegedly trolling the interviewer, which probably pissed him off. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, I guess it's good news. Uh, Yeah, I mean, it's definitely good news because, I mean, what are you going to, how would you have felt watching Batman and you felt like your sister could have beat him up? And meanwhile, you know, he's like the main vigilante of the DC universe, you know, right. who, who doesn't have superpowers. Like he like I think that's one of his biggest draws for people is everybody can kind of see themselves becoming Batman because he doesn't rely on powers. He, re- right. he relies on on his own physical strength and his intelligence and everything. So he became a superhero that anyone could become. So, you know, and if you were supposedly in those situations, but I think he just saw the reaction that his fans was having, that they weren't really backing him on the stance he was trying to make and understand where he was coming from, you know, body shaming and so forth and so on. But when physique is an integral part of the character you're playing, 
Right. That's like trying Absolutely. to say I'm gonna. Yeah, that's like saying I'm gonna be the star in a biopic about Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I'm not gonna work out for the role because yeah. I shouldn't have to. Like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but uh, I think he just heard the 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 fan reaction and said, "All right, if I'm gonna do this for the fans, I'm gonna do it right after listening to them." Yeah, absolutely, man. And like I said, it's, it's good news. Again, it's not about the body shaming thing. It's all about taking on the role and the character who you're becoming. I think Sean okay. said it best. If you're going to play Batman, you have to be intimidating. If you don't look intimidating, that's not Batman. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it, it, it's like we don't want to overthink what he looks like as Bruce Wayne while he's playing in the movie. You just want to see him as Batman and as Bruce Wayne. You don't want to think about anything else. So it's yeah. good to hear that he's actually taking the role seriously. So. I'm looking forward to seeing the trailer or a preview with that, hopefully come August, just to see a little oh, yeah. bit more about what he's doing with the movie there. So definitely yeah, good news and what, there. Yeah, and what they're doing with the Joker, because I heard they're doing a new Joker for the movie as well. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, it's not going to be Jared Leto or that Joker, but yeah. I'd like to see what spin they're going to take on the Joker now, especially after Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Absolutely. So, yeah. That's Big shoes to fill, big clown shoes to fill. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's why I think they'll be tight lip on that. Maybe these, uh, maybe the, uh, the DC, um, the what was it, uh, something dumb fandom. Yeah, you know, that would be a good time to drop some information on what they're doing and and so forth. But um, yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. And then another news out. We got this whole thing with the NBA players. You know, they're trying to get the league started. And what they're trying to do is to convince the league or the teams, at least, to come to Walt Disney World to do their, you know, to do their their basketball league right there. No one leaves. Everyone stays in the same place. But to make it more convenient, they're putting them in the, the best hotels, best luxury things that they could give them. And one of the bonuses is access to movies. So they want to give them access to all these movies that are coming out before people get to see them as a way to kind of almost entice them to want to come and do this thing with the basketball. Now. One of the movies they're going to be able to see, without a doubt, is going to be The Black Widow. Okay. Now, Brandon, we tried to do this podcast yesterday. It didn't work out with the sound <laughs> quality and everything. So that's why we're doing it again today. Brandon said, how do we become an NBA player? Is it too late? <laughs> 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 and it's definitely too late for all of us to be NBA players. Basically, yeah. Uh, but honestly, man, what do you think, man? I mean, I personally think it's good promotion and it's a good way to put the name out there because most likely what they're going to do is make them sign NDA saying that they can't disclose anything that they saw, but they can give a good review. Right. Yeah. So you're going to have people talking about this movie, but I just can't, I can't stop thinking that they're going to spoil it for someone. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're definitely going to, someone, uh, I, if all the NBA players are going to see it. They're going to spoil it. Someone's going to spoil it. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I agree with you. I think it's a good marketing ploy. I think it's a great way, especially, I mean, like we've been discussing in past episodes, the concern about going back to the theater and everything. And I think it's a smart move. Like to, if you're, you know, the young, the young generation is going to be definitely the one who might risk it a little bit more right. than us. Like, you know, we have parents we got to worry about. We have kids we've got to worry about. Kids, they just tend to, you know, not to put them down. But, you know, like we were that age, you really just, you're short-sighted a little. So they, if they hear their favorite basketball player talking about, yo, I just caught this movie, you need to go see it. They're going to be like, yo, LeBron told me I have to go see this movie. I'm going to go check this <laughs> I got to go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I think it was a, uh, I think it's a, a good move. I think it's a smart move. Yeah. You know, just to get that hype out there for nothing less than to make people motivated for whatever reason to take that chance or, you know, go out there and go see a movie because yeah. that industry is definitely going to need something to jumpstart it right now. You know, especially with some of these movie theaters having some pains, Absolutely. anything to get as many people out there and keep these movies getting made. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm for it. Right. And, you know, it's funny, man, because I was like mad almost like, oh, how come they get to go see it? You know, NBA players get everything. And I said to myself, <laughs> if someone came up to me in the middle of our podcast, I was like, yo, Hop, you could go see the Black Widow and uh, the rest of the team can. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'll tell them how it was. <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, that's I got nothing to do with that, but I'll go. <laughs> Yeah, man. And then the last yeah. bit of news for this week, Al, man, was the Oscars. You know, they're trying to figure out what to do themselves because with all this stuff going on with movies, they're trying to say that they're going to extend the Oscar season from January 1st 
to February, I believe, 28th, 2021. So basically giving it two more months for the 2020 Oscars. And I'm not sure if I'm really cool with that, but, um, you know, I wanted to see what you thought about that, because personally, I want 2020 to be as short as possible. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm over this. <laughs> I, I think they're doing that because they don't want to have to give awards to uh, Sonic. Sonic. Best picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they want to give all these late release movies as much chance to come in and give them better options as far as who they have to give the award to right. than the so very select few that they have right now. Because basically, if you didn't come out before April, mm -hmm. almost nobody saw you. And yeah. they and I think are they now including streaming movies? Because I don't think they're including any movie know. that was released straight to streaming. Exactly. And that's, you know, and that, that's one of my things that I, I'm, I'm against this whole like adding two months to 2020 because movies still did come out. And I think they have to get rid of this whole, you know, I, I think it's one of the, their uh, criteria is they have to be played in the theater. Right. But yeah, I think theatrical for, release, yeah. yeah, but things like the things that happened this year, you kind of have to make exceptions for some things. Right. And yeah. I think that it's also not fair to put 2021 movies with the 2020 movies. Just because of the pandemic. Listen, movies still came out. Movies were still on demand. Movies were still being released. And, you know, it's it's almost like kind of like forgetting that 2020 happened. You know, it is what it is. Whatever movies come out in this year is what movies come out in this year. Because think about this, Al. We still have not really opened movie theaters up. And there's things going on right now in Florida, Texas, Arizona regarding the coronavirus that may cause them to shut down again. If they shut down again, are they the movies are not going to come out again? So we're going to keep pushing it back. So what are the Oscars going to go into May 2021 now? So yeah. like, it's a lot of things about it that I just don't agree. I just think you have to deal with what you got. Whatever comes out in 2020 is what's what's out in 2020. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. Instead of extending it those two months, just opening it up to any movie released in any format in any way, as long as you were a movie, right? You know, as long as you were, as long as you could have been released theatrically then we're going to consider you for contention and then just let it be that way you know so yeah I, I don't agree with extending it i agree with just opening it up more to you know movies that did choose to release absolutely man i mean i, I could see it right now best picture sonic scoob trolls world tour extraction <laughs> <laughs> well no not trolls see that's one of the movies i think they should include but they probably won't because trolls was released directly to to video it was right, exactly. streaming that was the one that caused the whole fight between with universal <laughs> and uh, regal and amc yeah man. So, but that's what i'm saying like you you'll have good movies that right. won't be contenders now because the co movie company that released it decided, you know what, let's try to at least make our revenue now and put it straight on streaming. Yeah. So now that doesn't make it a good movie just because right. of how they decided to release it. Like, I don't, If anything, if you want to keep that theatrical re release requirement for next year because now the vaccine was found, people are coming out again, and you are having theatrical releases again, fine. But for this year, make an exception. Put an asterisk next to it if you want. That's it right there. Yeah, but do something. <laughs> You know, I hear you, man. Yeah, man. And listen, fellas, everybody that's watching on uh, YouTube there or listening on the podcast, that's going to be everything for the news of this week. Now, just really quick, we're going to put this on a pause for one second. If you're listening on the podcast, you're not even going to notice it. But we'll be <laughs> right back with more of the real fan review with a review of You Should Have Left. We'll be right back. All right, guys. So we're back now with uh, the real fan review. Sorry about that little weird pause there. To be honest with you, my computer's about to die on y'all. So <laughs> <laughs> luckily I found a little cord and just plugged that bad boy right in before we lost everything. So listen, right now we're going to get into the You Should Have Left. This is the movie that me, Al, Brandon, we're all going to catch this week. And we actually ended up catching it. And uh, we'll go with a spoiler-free review. Al, I don't know what you thought about the movie, but for me, Al, I think it's one of those where, again... Kind of seeing why these movies are going straight to video. I will say that it was entertaining. It was good, but not great. And it was even saying it was good was a little bit much because a part of it was weak. There were certain mm -hmm. things in this movie that happened where I was just like predictable, you know. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> but other than that, I mean, it, it was still entertaining. It's still something cool to watch. But if I could tell people something about this movie, I would say that you should wait to rent it instead of paying the whole like $20 for it on the video on demand. Wait till it's on Redbox or when it comes out on one of these streaming services or something like that. Yeah. Al, how about yourself, man? What'd you find about the movie there? Same thing. Like I watched it. It was my, my I watched it with my wife because we love movies like this, as you know. Right. Um, so when we saw the preview, we, we couldn't wait for it to come out. So we saw it like not Friday night. I think we saw it like Saturday afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, but we enjoyed it. Um, but I, 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 I completely agree with you. Like there were certain things that I wish they had done a lot better that would have made it a much better movie. Oh yeah. I absolutely. wouldn't give it, I wouldn't give it a, you have to see it, but if you can see it, go ahead, watch it, you know, when you can, when it's convenient for you. Um, yeah. Because the movie drags out for a movie that's not very long. I think it's only like just over an hour and a half. Right. The movie felt like three hours. Like I felt <laughs> like I had just sat there for, I don't know, like uh, watched the Lord of the Rings movie or something. Because it drags out telling everything so much that you yeah. think that there's going to be a big buildup for it. Like they stress the the history of the house and this and that. And then they don't really go into why it's of significance. They go into. They keep re- referring back to what he did, and right. it, it, it plays out at the end as to why that was significant. But it, like you didn't have to do it that often or that I much. See. Like one big de- de- telling or one big reference as to what happened, and then everybody can get it as to if you had explained the intent of, like, say, the house. Like, right. I mean, it's in the preview, so uh, in the preview, so we're not ruining anything of it. But they go on about the house, how it was bigger inside than it was outside. Right. And made nothing of it. <laughs> Why? Like, who made the house? Like, how did it, like, the, the whole history and reason as to why that even happens or what, it's not built yeah. up. It's not explained. It's, it's uh, I think, a one line throwaway from someone to explain why there's mystery involving the house. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. Like, and then Amanda Seyfried's character, what was she like? She didn't need to be there. Then, yeah. Like, I get why she was in the movie, but in the end, she kind of left anyway. And then it was just like, oh, okay. You're basically yeah. there to do one thing, and, and that's pretty much it, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think she was supposed to be our point of view. Like, she was supposed to be us, like, asking the questions or get, giving the reason for stuff at certain points in the movie. But Right. Yeah, to tell Other us a little that. bit. Yeah, yeah, detail or two. Yeah, yeah man. I mean, listen, as, as far as a horror movie goes, I think there was maybe like one or two scary scenes, I think, in the movie. There was definitely one jump scare that scared the crap out of me. Uh, <laughs> but I hate jump scares. So <laughs> there was one big jump scare. And then at the rest of the movie was just more like you're trying to figure out what's exactly happening here. You know what I mean? But then they kind of try to explain it away, like Al said, in one real swoop of, of a of a character that's in the store somewhere that just goes, Oh, this. And it's just yeah. like, Oh, okay. That's it. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. I mean, as far as a horror movie, I, I, I wouldn't say it's one of the best horror movies I've seen or anything really, really fantastic. that would go back to rewatch it or anything like that. Um, and as far as the actors in the movie, I think Kevin Bacon did great. He did okay. You know what I mean? Like he did his part where he, he held the movie. You were, you know, entertained and you watched the movie. You, you wanted to see what would play out. You didn't want to quit on him or anything like that. So mm-hmm. I, I, Kevin Bacon did his thing, and that's pretty much it. I mean, just you know, Kevin Bacon, and you know, th- th- there's not too many characters in the movies. Pretty much, yeah. Kevin Bacon and Amanda Seyfried. So, yeah. Uh, what about yourself, man? What do you think of it as a far as a horror movie and as far as like Kevin Bacon in the movie? See, that's what what got me. Had they not called it a horror movie, I think I would have been a little more satisfied with the movie than I was but going in expecting a horror movie and to me it felt more like just a thriller like a, a, yeah. a drama um than it did anything else um because I kept waiting to get scared and I was yeah. there was nothing scary it it played out more like a drama like okay he had something in his past that he's dealing with it's right. affecting them now and it has a result there was nothing scary about anything that happened. The scariest part that happened to me, and I've had it just happen in dramas, was when he, you know, there's a scene where he's looking for his daughter. Yeah. 
you know, and just the idea of not knowing where your, your child is, any parent can relate to, and you would feel that anxiety. So if that's the, the scariest part of this movie, to me, <laughs> it lost, it, it, I'm like, okay, when am I getting scared? What's going to be the horror? Like what's, I got you. And, and that horror never came. So I, I think labeling it and, and promoting it as a horror movie was a mistake. Absolutely, man. So listen, that that's going to be our spoiler-free review of You Should Have Left with Kevin, with Kevin Bacon. Um, and as you can hear from me, Al, we're not really super hyped about the movie. Again, for me, it's one of those <laughs> that you should wait till you don't have to pay $20 to see this movie. You know what yeah. I mean? So I wouldn't go get it on video on demand right away. It's not one of those where you need to go see it or you should see it right away kind of things. Uh, Al, what about you, man? Would you say like three stars, two and a half kind of thing for yourself? or Yeah, like two and a half. Out, yeah. out, out of five, yeah. Because, I mean, like you said, the acting was good. Amanda Seyfried, for the little that she did, she did a good part. Like, I can't critique her performance too much. Right. And Kevin Bacon, like you said, he did he did pretty well for, for what he was given. And I think that's where it fell apart was what he was given. Gotcha, man. And now, listen, for the fans out there that do want to see, you know, you should have left. We're going to go into a quick little spoiler thing. It's not going to take forever. So what I'll do is if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to give you a little thumbs up to let you know to come back on and unmute us. <laughs> or you're going to just forward it up like maybe five or ten minutes. But, uh, yeah, Al, we'll go right into spoilers really quick about this movie because there's things I want to say to you about this thing. Okay. All right. So we're going into spoilers now for You Should Have Left. Al. This movie was fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I had high, I mean, watching those previews, I had high expectations for it. Let me tell you something, Matt. I, the, the only like enjoyment I had was afterwards thinking to myself, you should have left. What was it trying to say? You should have left, right? What, what was this movie trying to tell you? Because he walks in on himself writing down, you should have left. So he was telling himself that he, he should leave, right? But he couldn't because apparently this is the house of the devil. Or the house of purgatory, one or the other, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think what the deeper meaning of you should have left is more that since he's this tortured soul because he, you know, he watched his ex wife die instead of helping her, is I think he was trying to say like a, a play on the words, like a double entendre, where it's like he should have left his relationship, right? He should yeah. have left his marriage instead of watching her die so that way he wouldn't be upset and he would be able to be a better husband, dad, or whatever the case may be because he had this like pent-up anger or frustration. So I thought it was a play on like, oh, I get it. He should have left. <laughs> mm -hmm. How about yeah. you, Al? What you think, man? Yeah, no, the same thing because I think he even says it at the end when, when he's admitting uh, to what he did. And to, as to why he has to stay in the house when he admits to um, uh, Amanda Seyfried, his wife's character, that yeah. he killed his previous wife. He was like, you know, I should have I should have left the relation, the end of the marriage. So he doesn't say he should have left because they already used that for the book. But he says, I should have ended the relationship. I shouldn't have let it go on uh, uh, the All way right. it did and so forth. So. Like, yeah, I agree. Like it. And just that loop just kept throwing me around. Like we we kept trying to figure out, okay, are they in different dimensions? Are they? Right. Is it different times? So I feel we kind of caught on that, that they were in different time. Yeah, that different right times. There is what could have made that movie better. Is if they explained everything better. If they had explained what was going on in that house better, where it would have been a twist. Like, mm -hmm. oh shoot, he's like this. But I felt like it was just like maybe not thought out completely. Because that there could have been something there, man. Because you, you know what it reminded me of a little bit? Do you ever remember that movie called Others with um, okay. with uh, Tom Cruise's ex-wife? I forgot her name. Nicole Kidman. Yes. I remember her and her kids were the ghost at the end of the movie. Oh, by the way, spoiler alert for the Others. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, 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 that twist shocked everyone because you're like, oh, shoot, they're the ghosts. You know, and I think there was something with that where they could have done with Kevin Bacon, like, oh, shoot, he's haunting himself. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because the old man that turned into him, I never thought it was him in Under There. Like, that would have been a nice revelation to be like, oh, he's haunting himself somehow, mm -hmm. some way. But it just wasn't done right, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then the fact of the the room 
being bigger on the inside than it was on the outside had no significance to the movie. Nothing. So you have that whole scene play out, and really all you want to show is that when the girl runs inside, she disappeared and didn't show up, and he had to go find her. Yeah. You couldn't you couldn't have come up with something else as to what was the catalyst for that scene other than something mysterious about the house that you never go back to again. Yeah. Like what what was the point of telling us that it it looks different inside than it is outside or it occupies more space inside than it does outside if that doesn't factor into the plot in any way for the rest of the movie? How about the right angles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I didn't understand that either. Like, what was the point? Like, like that had him, nothing uh, to do with I it. I forgot what the name of the tool is. It's basically a ruler, but I was going to call it a protractor, but it's not a protractor. Yeah. <laughs> but he basically gave him, like, a, a stencil. And it's like, yeah. what am I going to do with this? <laughs> I did, there was yeah. so much that they threw into the movie to create mystery yeah. that you didn't answer. Like, it, so like the photograph. Who, 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 who's taking the pictures? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was the point? Yeah, and and Polaroids at that. Like, what's the point of a flash if you're not showing that he's taking it because then he was going to try to show that? Listen, I'm here. I'm watching you. It's exactly it's you. like there was no reason. To... Exactly, man. That would have been again like a great a great twist ending. You know what I mean? And, and look, and I was saying before that there was only two scary scenes for me. The daughter jump scare when he went down to the basement. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that coming. And I jumped out of my seat. <laughs> and his girlfriend answering a second phone. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I didn't pick up my phone and look at, look at wifey's phone next to her. I'm like, uh. I'm a right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, and this, that goes again to another thing. Like, other than be using that to, to get her out of the house, like that served no purpose. Like that, like yeah. what would have been good was if she just got tired of his insecurity and left as right. opposed to making it that, yeah, she was cheating all along and he was right to be upset and, and angry. Right. Yeah. Like make it that she leaves because he's and then it just adds to his character flaw. No, now you made him right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so <laughs> I feel bad for him, but yet he's the bad guy. Exactly. <laughs> like insane. Uh, so man. it was like there was so many different yeah, so many different ways I would have thought they could have gone with that to make it a more plausible story than everything. Okay, you're just using her for that. So that's all she was. She was really just like, like her character really was just, all right, we're using you to set up all these scenes. That's all we're really using you for. Because she played no impact in any other way. Yeah. She even left the damn movie for about a good half hour, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Well, listen, guys. You guys here, we're not too excited about it. You should have left. Not going to be in no. our top five for this year. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you guys do have a chance, like I said, you know, before we, we watch these movies and we talk about them to kind of make you interested in either seeing the movie and making a judgment for yourself. So, listen, if you saw the movie, if you're watching us on YouTube, comment below, let us know what you thought about the movie. And if you're listening to us on the podcast, you know, shoot us an email real quick. Just let us know what you thought of you, what you should have left. Now, Al, man, we kind of did the podcast a little late and putting out the video a little late because we had Father's Day this weekend, man. And happy Father's Day to you, brother. Happy and, Father's uh, Day. Yeah, man. Thank you, and brother. to all the other fathers out there. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. So listen, man, we're, we're, I was thinking about, you know, movie dads and movie dads and situations. And I was thinking to myself, all these different movies, all these different pops on there. And, and it was funny because when we did the Mother's Day show, we didn't really have any mothers that we could think of that we could put in there. But for, for dads, I, I got a list of things we could talk <laughs> about there. So how about this, Al? We're going to go for like our top three dad moments or or just basic movie dad that stands out there. And, and I'll hit you off with the first one that I think of every time I think of movie dads. It's Henry Jones from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, played by Sean Connery. Dude. Wow. Their relationship in that movie is hysterical. When they find out that they were both sleeping with the same girl, and you know, Indiana thought that it was about him, and it was, and Henry's like he was talking back to her. <laughs> that movie, man, that father son relationship, man, 
it, it, and throughout the whole movie is just awesome to watch, awesome to see. You can see their, you know, rapport with each other there. And again, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is that, you know, towards the end where Indiana Jones had to do the, the, these, uh, what would you call them out? Like not traps, but it was almost like what he had to That's do to like get trials, trials, yeah, like trials to get to the, the cup of Christ there to save mm-hmm. his dad. And, you know, it was just, there's so many little moments in that movie that whenever I think about movie dads, I do think about Indiana Jones and the, and the uh, last crusade there. It's one of my top five movies I've ever seen. So yeah, man, for me, Henry Jones played by Sean Connery. <laughs> Al, man, what's a movie dad or a movie situation that you, uh, you think about when you see, think about movie dads? Well, it's, uh, I'll say a movie dad, but I won't say a movie situation. Um, okay. cause hopefully I'm never in that situation, but, I always think, um, and I'm I'm glad you because you, you did give us a list. A uh, list. It was, was John Q. Uh, was because I, not only did he do a great performance in that movie, and but so. and at the time I wasn't even a parent, and I was uh, like, you know what, I can completely understand where this guy is coming from. Mm-hmm. Like, I, what else are you gonna do? Like, it's your child's life or this, and then. You know, I won't ruin it for everybody, believe it or not, if if you haven't seen it. <laughs> but the choice he makes at the end, I realistically think any parent that's really a parent, um, you know, not anybody that just you have a kid, you're actually a parent to that child. I think any anyone would make that decision, you know, um, right. what he was willing to do uh, for right. his child right. at the end of the movie, knowing yeah. that there was no other option. So, um uh, yeah, I. That's one of the movies that always gets me, and and sh- would be like an example of what you're gonna say. That's what you should be as a father willing to do for your kid. If you're not willing to do that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you have to then <laughs> question that 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 title you're supposedly giving yourself. Absolutely, man. All right, man. So let me give you another one since you hit me with a good one there with John Q. I'm going to give you a movie dad and a movie situation, man. And whenever I think of this situation in this movie and what it's represented and what it stood for, I always get like little chills, man, because I wonder to myself, would I do it, right? And it's Pa Kent. (laughs) Calling Superman. Not now. Don't expose yourself right now. I'll let myself die for the dog. <laughs> and it wasn't necessarily for the dog. I mean, he went and saved the dog, but it was more of mm-hmm. telling his son, "I don't want you to expose yourself because of me. I want you to choose when the right time is to expose yourself, and I'll take this L." I, I mean, just like you said about John Q, it, it that he put his son before everything in that scene, and 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 shout out to Kevin. I was gonna say Kevin Costner, right? Costner, yeah. Oh, he played Pa Kent amazing, man, amazingly. Mm-hmm. So, uh, to me, Pa Kent is a dad of all dads for that alone. <laughs> <laughs> just again, that hand up and just not even a word, just shook his head. Don't do it. Yeah. And we understood. We all understood why, and it was just like, wow, that was that was crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Al, what's your second one for yourself, man? Another one that um, it just makes me relate because sometimes you know you always think of the father like as this macho guy person in a movie, but I always always think back to um, Back to the Future, and uh, uh, what's the father's name? Marty McFly, but what was the father's name? I, oh, I keep okay. forgetting the. Because I only the, the guy only ever calls him McFly, McFly as he's flicking him and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep forgetting what the father's name is. He's played by Crispin Glover, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like his, he's like this nerdy, not macho because he was bullied. His like they show him even as an adult in the beginning of the movie, he was bullied and everything. Right. But like he was a more like he I bet. was a real, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he was a relatable character. <laughs> You know, and I always felt right. bad for him and, and everything. And so, yeah, the, the dads and the fact that, you know, he, you know, he still ran a family. He still held them together and everything. So, mm-hmm. 
it was, you know, his wife was still able to look at him lovingly and everything, even though he was that guy. Right. So, is it George uh, McFly? Probably. Why do I keep thinking Sounds, George? Maybe. Maybe. Right. I, I, on every scene I think of, it's always just him getting flicked in the head or something <laughs> like that, talking to McFly. Yeah, so, and at the end, a little knockout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, that, that's, that's another father fit character that I always think back to whenever I think of father characters. All right, man. And listen, I'm going to give you my last one. And, and Al, if this was a challenge, I think I won, bro. I think uh-huh. I won. I'm going to go with Brian Mills from Taken. Liam okay. Mason. <laughs> and his particular set of skills. Dude, if, if I almost <laughs> wish... Someone would, 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 no, I don't want to wish that. <laughs> I just want to answer the phone that way. Like, if, if Noah doesn't come home on time, I have a particular set of skills <laughs> to get his ass home. <laughs> oh, dude, but then again, I don't know. You know, when something happens to someone like three times, so, dude, like, oh, it's, I think it's, it's, it's them. It's not, not the kid. Yeah. Not the kid and the wife's fault, man. It's you now. Yeah, yeah. Something's wrong with you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so maybe he's uh, not a great dad. <laughs> <laughs> but he kicks some ass, dude. Ah, kid. Okay. Oh. Yo. At first taken, guys, if you haven't seen Taken One, just go check out a check out old man kick some ass for like a half yeah. or two hours. <laughs> yeah. That brought Liam Neeson back for a little while because he wasn't in much before that. I I mean he's been in some good movies, but that one definitely I think put him back on everybody's radar, if Ooh. I remember because I would remember watching that movie and thinking, like, damn, like, right. yeah, like, I mean, I know I watch movies multiple times and I've never shied away from watching movies multiple times, but that was like one of the few movies where, like, right after I watched it, I yeah. wanted to watch it again. Yeah, you know? I rented it. I rented it. The next day I went and bought it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that movie was pretty good, man. Yeah. Uh, Al, who's your who's your last dad or dad situation you got there, brother? Um, what's his name? Will Smith played him in Pursuit of Happiness. Chris Gardner. Yeah, I oh, mean, this is a man. It was just yeah, kid. I mean, it was him, <laughs> his son. I mean, they're sleeping in the worst of places and bathrooms on the floor, oh. locking the ah. Oh, that scene where the guy where they're trying to bang into the 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 bathroom and he has the door locked and he's holding it as his son is sleeping on his lap. Oh, kid. I mean, if that's not, I mean, short of giving you life, if that's not sacrifice to, to make sure that you're still there for your son with your son and doing what you can for your kid. Um, and to just know that in real life, that that's a real true story and that he really did go through that and was able to build himself up to what he became. Mm-hmm. It's it's a it's one of the most inspirational stories out there. Ah, when he got that phone call that he got the job. Oh, okay. oh dude. Dude. Uh, oh, we're gonna have to stop the podcast, dude. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was a, that was a good one, man. Pursuit of Happiness, man. Another great one, man. Another yeah. good dad, also, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah man. And listen, but when uh, me and Brandon talked about it yesterday, he said he said Darth Vader. <laughs> I was like, what? He goes, he's a great dad. I said, he chopped off his, he saw, he chopped off his son's arm. He goes, he he could sense him and he tried to help him bring him to the lights and like the dark side. (laughs) It was the other way around. Other way, boy. (laughs) Crazy, man. Oh, Oh, man. man. Yeah, man. So those are some good dads there, man. And then the last thing, man, what I want to end the podcast on out is our own personal stories of our dads. You know, I, I, you know, when I think about my dad on Father's Day and movies, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so funny because my mom was the movie person. But my dad, he does make me think about movies sometimes because he's been infamous for his bootlegs. Uh, <laughs> my dad will come home with like 15 movies. And before like DVDs, he would come with these VHS tapes that have like three or four movies on them. And it's insane because I'm a movie fanatic, but I'm also like this like movie snob also. I, it has to be in high definition, surround sound, uh, <laughs> you know, great quality, you know what I mean? 
Yeah. It's insane. And then here my dad is bringing these bootleg movies where you sometimes can't see too much. You got shaky cam. I swear to you, that literally you'll see somebody stand up in the audience or you hear the audience laugh. You know, and it's just hilarious because, you know, my dad knows I'm like a little movie snobbish. So he knew that I was going to go see Matrix Reloaded when it came out. And and I was, if you guys remember, I dressed up for Matrix Reloaded. I dressed up as Keanu Reeves when we went to the theater. So I remember it was like the day before the movie came out. My dad goes to me, he goes, you want to see Matrix? That movie, the new Matrix, right? I go, yeah. He goes, I got it. And like, dad, he goes, I already saw it. I like, and my dad is the worst because he can't keep a secret. He doesn't know what spoiling is. He just thinks he's just selling you information. I like that. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing. He goes, it's not even that good, Papa. You know, like, <laughs> he's just, he doesn't care, man. <laughs> I ran out the house. I made sure I didn't stay at the house until I finished that movie. In, in uh... movie theater. But yeah, that's that's probably like my best movie memory with my dad because like my dad is infamous for starting a movie and never finishing it. Like he's like this in like 15 minutes. <laughs> so <laughs> my dad's knocked uh, out in like 10, 15 minutes. So yeah, man, those that's my movie memory with my dad. I, I don't know about you, man. I've always heard about your mom with the movies, but how about you yeah. with your pop? Yeah, no, it's the same thing. My father was he's never been a movie person. My father can yeah. watch baseball, football. So he can watch sports from when he wakes up to when he goes to sleep. Right. Um, but not, he's not much of a movie person. He, it's rare that you'll see him sit down for a whole movie. I mean, it's got to be something where everybody's watching the movie and then he'll watch it. But if you went to, went to him and just said, oh, dad, you want to watch this movie? He may if he knows mm-hmm. you really want to, but he's not really going to be into right. it. Like he he'd rather just w- sit around the house literally with music playing. Right. That that's my father. My father's big thing is music. He from when I was a kid, the, there was, if he was home, there was music playing. <laughs> um. So that's what I know for my father. Um. Gotcha. And he would and, and it would be music, music like the 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 albums, the forty fives, the right, you know. right, right. But um. <laughs> But the one movie re- memory I have with him, and this is going to show you how far back I have to go for it, was he took me to the theater to see Return of the Jedi. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I remember, so like I have a Rambo memory with my mother. My my movie memory with my father is Return of the Jedi. Gotcha. Now, I'm not going to say that's necessarily why I'm such a Star Wars fan, but I'm sure it's a contributing factor. You know, that's awesome. but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I remember going to the theater, Roosevelt Field Theater. I uh-huh. even remember it was it was the, the I remember what what um which theater in the which you know movie hall in the theater we went to see it in I remember where we sat down because it was that rare for my father to be watching a movie. So you remember so, that one, yeah? <laughs> oh, kid! All these years later, I still could tell you that we went to that room. We sat in this aisle, and yeah. um, yeah, man. But um, it it was cool watching it, and and he's funny when he watches when to watch something with him because he doesn't try to dissect it, he doesn't try to analyze it, um, you know. Like after the movie's done, that's it. He's done. He, okay, let's move on. What's what's next? Like, what are we yeah. doing next? Like, whereas yeah. with anybody else, like I'll sit there and we'll be like, oh, okay, this is what happened. What do you think that person? Th-? Nope. Nah. Nah. He watched it. That's it. Didn't know. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's yeah. awesome, man. Al, man, thanks for sharing that, man. Yeah, yeah man. Well, listen, man, that's gonna be our show for this week, man. We had just had the news, the, the one movie there, and these movie dad situations and our own dad situations there. So we thank you guys for listening as always. And uh, listen, if you have any comments or if you want to tell us a memory you have with your dad, you know, feel free to send a comment right there on YouTube or email us at therealfanreview at gmail.com or go to our website, therealfanreview.com. Send us a message. If there's a topic you want us to discuss as well, just leave us a, a little message in any one of our spaces there, and we'll make sure we get to it and talk about it on the next episode. Guys, we thank you as always. We're coming in live from New York. Myself, Hav, I thank you for joining us today. We got my man in the chair, Al. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Next episode, we're recapping 2020, the halfway point. So we'll get you guys all up to date with what we think of the first half and what we hope for the next half. We'll catch you on the next one. Good night.